Welcome everyone to That Kind of Nerds Podcast, a weekly show that tells you what is going on in the nerdy world. We also now discuss robes. Robes. I am CJ Mellon, joined by Josh Burns and Brian Make Me Buy It Now Thornton. What up? Listen, the key to a good robe is not just no. the fluffiness, but it's also how restrictive you feel, especially in the shoulder area. Listen, I need you to, to do me a favor. If you're driving, <laughs> I need you to pull over. Just pull over real quick. I need you to, now that you're in a safe place, put park. Close your eyes. All right. If you're walking, please go sit down on the neighbor's lawn. Close your eyes. I want I want you to picture something. I want you to I want you to I want you to, I want to paint a picture with my words. I need you to, to to picture this. Josh Burns sitting in his luxurious chair that doesn't uh was never on the uh, side of a road on on, on a curb. Right. Uh, wearing a luxurious, luxurious navy robe. I mean, mm. the man looks man looks comfier than, than than Santa Claus the day after Christmas. Right? <laughs> Brian being uh green with envy it is now trying to uh to, to buy said robe. So I guess we talk about robes now. <laughs> now that we're done talking about robes, if this is your first time listening to the show, I highly recommend you go to intro.thatkindnerd.com, learn a little bit about us, a little bit about the show, and then go ahead and uh, dive headfirst into this episode. We talk about the world of TV and movies in a segment that we call Screen to Stream, because the first trailer for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker has dropped. Yes, we now have... The name of the newest Star Wars uh, movie, and we have uh, a trailer, which, by the way, will be the only trailer I'm going to watch for this movie. And I liked it. It was great. Episode nine, feelings, go. We feel like this is uh, using the word rise in terms of ascension and the departure of the Skywalker family completely, right? Uh, yes. Like like Dark Knight Rises. Like that. Yes. Like that. Like, like okay, so Ben's going to, you know, he's going to go. He got to go. And it's just going to be Ray and a new generation of Jedi is how I feel about this trailer. You don't think Ray is going to be a secret Skywalker? I think the episode, I think the title of this movie is episode nine, fuck the last Jedi. And <laughs> it's just, let's retcon everything. Oh, hey, all of you fanboys who thought Ray was a Skywalker, guess what? You're right. And she's rising. And... All that other stuff that we did in Last Jedi, none of that is actually right. Don't you think like the the like the the first thing the first print on the screen was uh an end of of the saga. It said that. It said those words. Yes. They they have said, and I'll I'll, I'll state this before we talk about the actual trailer. Uh they have said that there's going to be a hiatus after this this chapter in Star Wars and we're for two years, have, like they always have a hiatus. It, I don't know how long the gap was between the prequels and this one, uh, but there's going to be a bigger gap. They're saying, don't expect a back-to-back star Wars farm of episode 10 next. It's it's going to take a while. They'll probably these spinoff shows. We have the Disney plus stuff, which we're going to talk about. Later. I don't see why it would take a while. They've got an, like the, the most giant extended universe in existence. Yeah. But I'm saying main chapter, chapter 10, they don't know what chapter 10 is going to be. So, I mean, fucking anything. Just give me more Star Wars. They'll give you more spinoffs. They'll make more little movies and more little TV shows to fill the extended universe, the whole nine yards. But they're not going to start a new chapter, a new saga for a while. Uh, I'll say this. This trailer looked fantastic. Obviously, it's it's a it's a teaser. It's a trailer. It's what it's supposed to do. But uh, let's let's talk about the 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 laugh at the end. I mean, the the fact that we uh, we heard Emperor Palpatine uh, somehow alive. Kinda, kind of freaky, and uh, are we sure that's Palpatine? That's a pretty yes, we are because uh, after they premiered the trailer in front of a large con of some sort, uh, the actor who played General Palpatine was out on stage with them laughing. He so, got thrown yes. down a hole. I'm pretty sure it's Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <laughs> you so thought I was dead. You so wrong. <laughs> oh. It hurts. <laughs> so here's my question. Actually, Brian, I have a question for you, and I'm, I'm going to I'm going to challenge you on this one. Like, can you explain to me this the right counting that you're already seeing in this trailer uh, from from episode eight? I don't I, think I don't, it is a retcon at all. It absolutely is. I don't see any retconning. And I'm curious what you're okay. seeing. That's making you well, say hang that. on. I, I legitimately I do need to watch the trailer again so I can answer that question. Because <laughs> the only thing that I, because a. It's a great trailer, and B, there was a lot in there. 
Hang on. A few moments later. All right. So there's only two main things that I can tell that they're retconning right now. That's A, the, the destruction of the Kylo Ren helmet. And B, I am all, I'm guaranteeing you Luke's voiceover. The fact that the title is called The Rise of, of Skywalker. I'm guaranteeing you they're having Rey be some... Her parentage is going to be more important, and they're going to retcon that. But that's not a retcon. It no, absolutely not. is. I think, dude, I honestly... No. I, I feel like it's almost uh, like a like a like an allusion to the Ascension. Don't, I don't, really do. Don't give me this bullshit that Kylo was lying don't, to her. No, 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 no. But, like, you had Luke in the extended universe uh, merged his midichlorians with the force and was able to manipulate all kind of shit. Right, right, right. Hold on. We're, we're talking two different things. So no, on. I get what I'm saying is I think the Skywalker name dies completely. I don't think Ray's a Skywalker. Well, who knows? Well, I, I mean, I, technically I Kylo's a solo. He's a Skywalker. He's a He's solo. He's Skywalker lineage. He's Leia's a solo. Leia's his mother. Le- Leia's his mother. He's I a get Skywalker. It. He's a solo. I mean, he didn't make the Kessel run in under 13 parts. But Brian, listen, the only thing that you can really point to is the voiceover of Luke saying, no, we're going to bring more Luke back in, and Kylo Ren fixes his helmet. I don't see how that's rank conning. No, the voiceover of Luke saying no one is truly gone. Sure. And... I'm, th- this trailer gives me the heavy feels that they are going to retcon Ray's right. p- parentage slash non-parentage. I just want to make sure I, I'm clear on this. No evidence, your gut feeling. Well, Obi-Wan and Yoda aren't gone. I mean, they're still there. Really? Was the last movie you I'm saw just, them in? I'm saying they're there. Like, it's not, they're not gone. I mean, they can come back on screen whenever the fuck somebody puts and them And also, there. we just saw Yoda in The Force Awakens. Uh, in, in oh, the Last, last Jedi. Jedi. But we're retconning that. We so literally just saw, no, we're not retconning. So basically, what I'm hearing is there's no evidence of a retcon, and that's just your feelings. <laughs> okay, that's fine. It's good to know that you're wrong, and you can totally admit it. I, I get that. Um, No, it's just, it's, it is what I, dude, when this movie comes out in Christmas, and I'm right, I cannot wait to show oh up God. to your door in my robe. To you're, tell you how right I was. You're turning into one of those people, Brian, that's entrenched in a, in a gut feeling and now is making their own theory. So, like, be careful. You're becoming what you preach against. I think I've proven my track record. My track record with my gut theories are pretty damn good. Uh, okay. We'll see I'm that. going with this. But this trailer hasn't shown any evidence of retconning. That's your feelings. I need you to admit that your feeling is they're going to retcon this. I'm not going to act like Brian. I'm not. I'm not going to act like Brian isn't often right about this shit because he fucking is. But he is. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think, I think, I think this is, this is a maybe a pretty big hot take, and I'm not. I'm yeah. not sure I'm behind it. I'm not sure I'm behind it either. So let's get some hot takes on another trailer, though, because we got an extended trailer, or I guess our our first real trailer, for the live action, I'm going to call it better animated, uh, Lion King, uh, heavily featuring Scar. Uh, I was was impressed. I I like the work that Jon Favreau does, and Jon Favreau is in charge of making all uh, animals that aren't real looking real. He's in charge of that. That's his thing now. Uh, it looks fantastic. I like what we saw. Uh, my wife hates uh, the actor who plays Scar and thinks Jeremy Irons was better. And uh, of course he was. This is a different thing. Who's playing Scar? Chuelta Ejiofor. Oh, I like him very much. Yes. He's a good actor. He's He does good work. I mean, is he Jeremy Irons? No. But like, nobody does sinister like Jeremy Irons does Absolutely. Sinister. Yes. Like, Jeremy Irons is, is up there with Gary Oldman sinister. Like, he's up there. Absolutely. I, I like the work that they did. I, I it, it looks compelling. It's like it's going to draw you in. I think we're going to get some new elements to the story than we did with the, the animated, which I'm welcoming. I honestly, dude, I, I, I watched the first few seconds of this trailer, and I, I saw um, Simba and Nala in front of Scar, and I immediately stopped the trailer, and I thought, you know, I don't need to see any more. Ooh, you pull a CJ. I did. Yeah, I I'm, I, I ejected hard. Uh, I don't want to be spoiled at all in this movie. I want to be, I want to experience it start to finish. Although, well, Josh, the only thing I wish you would, would do is just watch like maybe the last five, ten seconds. No. Nope. Where it has Billy nope. Eichner and Seth nope. Rogen as Timon and Pumbaa. Uh, look, I'm sure they're hilarious. And, and for that reason, right? what I've seen has been so good. That I do not like, want to I'm see sold. anything more. No more. I'm good. I'm good. Right. Just, right. just like me and Rise of the Skywalker. All right. Sold sold to the sailor. I don't need any more. So, Brian, what were your impressions of this trailer? Oh, I fucking love this trailer, and I love The Lion King. And this trailer, oh my gosh, you got me so amped, because they take that music, the... 
sound like that, like do 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 do. Like I was. Ugh. Anyway, I'm pumped. The thing we don't have, we obviously haven't heard any. Uh, I've never heard not any Donald Glover or Beyonce. We've only heard of Mufasa and Scar so far. No Rafiki, nobody. I so. mean, I, I, all I really need to hear is Mufasa and Scar. So prepare yourselves for that movie. It's going to look great. And Josh, I'm so glad you uh, took my approach to just say, all right, I'm, I'm good. No more. Did you did you find me a release date? Is it July? I have a feeling it's July. I think it's two months after Aladdin. Oh, I have no interest. I still have no interest in Aladdin at all. I want to say it's July 19th. July 19th. There you go. I know because I'm often right. And I don't understand how long we have to be doing this for you to realize that. It's been four years. Four years of me being right about plenty of things. I was right about Foldy Mate. (laughs) I'm right about robes. I'm just right. <laughs> oh now our final trailer for the day was uh, thrown into our topic list uh, here by Brian with the the worms Josh Fafatel. It is trailer for the movie Anna. And um Josh I would love to hear your uh, your thoughts right away because I just watched this trailer and uh I have some emotions. Go for it. So yeah, so I have thoughts um and just first specifically addressing this film um this chick has done actually nothing like she's a model she's done nothing okay however around her you've got helen mirren luke evans kellen murphy and a bunch of other people but more importantly i what i wanted to talk about was luke Bassant because for the last almost 30 years he has written, produced, directed uh, all of the great femme fatale movies and most of the really solid revenge uh, uh, type type stuff. Um, so I'm going to go through some of that right now. Starting with La Femme Nikita was the first one. The movie and the TV series both. Point of No Return with Bridget Fonda, which was excellent, which is just basically another La Femme Nikita movie. Um, the Professional, obviously, the Fifth Element. He wrote The Fifth Element. Oh, that's such oh. a great movie. I love that movie. He wrote The Messenger, the Joan of Arc story. He wrote Kiss Kiss of the Dragon with Jet Li and uh, Revolver, which was a great Ooh. revenge film with Jason Statham. J.O.S.K.? Yeah. He wrote Unleashed, also Jet Li. Um, he wrote Columbiana. Uh, Zoe he, Saldana? Zoe Saldana. He wrote Three Days to Kill, which was not a great movie, but worth a watch. Like Amber Heard and Kevin Costner, worth a watch. Obviously wrote Lucy. He wrote the Taken TV series. uh, He produced the Taken movies. And the Taken movies he produced. Uh, And then now he's got Anna. And somehow Lucy, too, even though she became a computer uh, at the end of the the first one. Spoilers for Lucy. Spoilers. And Columbiana, too, which I'm very interested in. Uh, in 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 getting involved with, but like this dude has written the like the very best femme fatale and and revenge content in the last thirty years. So this should be someone every everybody gets behind. This should, this should be a film everybody should be at least somewhat excited to see. This looks like what Red Sparrow wanted to be. Oh, dude, and Red Sparrow was so terrible, so bad. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it should have been better, but this is great. First off, the music in the trailer too is just it is it is the perfect. Like music I mean, you it. got you got naked bits, and that was good. But right, beyond yes. that, yeah. But uh, no, this looks fantastic. The action's great. I love the fact she killed somebody with a plate. Like yeah, um, I'm I'm, I'm she's, I'm, she's severing arteries with a broken <laughs> with plate. a broken plate. I am one hundred percent sold on this trailer well this is my genre this is uh and and i absolutely it's, i absolutely adore this genre of movie but luke Basson um has done so much great stuff over the last 30 years i'm very excited to yeah, see this. this looks just really good it's coming out june 21st so uh heck dude I, we make this make we may make this a patreon movie this looks really good brian thoughts oh, i didn't know if you were gonna ask me to weigh in i thought all you needed <laughs> to hear from was josh <laughs> You were the one that was like, Josh, give me all your thoughts. You know, whatever. I'm excited to see the movie, too, if you care at all. Yes, that's why I asked. CJ or the listeners. I'm the one who's very excited for these types of movies as well. <laughs> she looks badass. But I but I specifically asked for your, your no, thoughts. No, it's cool. Let's go on. You don't need to know what I think anymore. <laughs> Honestly, I like like I I this this Sasha this Sasha Luss, I don't know who she is, but when I saw Helen Mirren and Luke Evans, yeah. I was like, fuck yeah. But I'm in. 
I can do without Kellen Murphy all the time. Hey, CJ. What's up, Ryan? Why don't you uh, tell me more? Tell me more about this Grease prequel. Wella, wella, wella. Let me tell you more. There is a Grease prequel <laughs> titled Summer Lovin' that's in the works. Oh, wow, 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 wow. You guys are super slick. Tell which is more, which is all about the, the, the summer where <laughs> I can't Why even Why does he have a car? <laughs> Tell me more, like, how come this movie is really sexist and it has a lot of explicit language and it's rated PG? Yeah, that song, uh, that Grease song Lightning? I don't think would be allowed anymore. No, she's a real, it's a real pussy wagon and the movie is rated PG. They wrap the car in cellophane, <laughs> right? Just to be like, oh, you gotta be safe when you fuck in the car because you're gonna fuck her in the car, right? Like, duh. And also women, just, just go back, go back in beauty school, right? Stay in the kitchen. Don't don't Beauty like don't don't. Drop out. Yeah, go back to high school. Don't don't no don't graduation better yourself. Day oh my god! Years. How are they even gonna make this movie? I don't know. It's the it's the prequel of. There's gonna be outrage from all the snowflakes. <laughs> Danny and Sandy summer together. So I I guess we're gonna see her flop. Are, are, are we really gonna are we really gonna watch uh, Danny Zucko coercing a girl into sex? Is uh, that is. <laughs> You're going to watch. Hey, oh, hey. Whoa. You're going to watch the exact <laughs> moment where Sandy starts to die and then her fever dream, which is Grease, begins. Right, yes. <laughs> That's why they end up in the flying car. Hey, right. whoa, you're drowning. They saved you. Hey. Oh, I, I, I don't know. No. That's legit a theory. Is that oh, the yeah. entirety of, of Grease oh, is yeah. that it's her, it's her like last, like, last, like, Oh, this guy! I saw this guy at the beach. She started drying, and I and, want a whole movie about Stockard Channing. Just give me a movie about Rizzo. I, I just want a movie about Stockard Channing. Just <laughs> give me her life story. That woman's been through so much. So I don't understand this. This is this is. Is I don't know if it's going to be a musical. I, it doesn't it my, seem a little unnecessary. A little unnecessary. We have a, a Grease little. sequel, by the way. There's Grease too. There is a second Grease. Yeah. It Again, was awful. At the end of Grease 1, they flew into the sky in a car, and there's a sequel to that movie which doesn't address that at all. <laughs> I just want everyone to know that sequel literally doesn't address the fact that they flew into the sky. But it's not the same characters. It doesn't matter. No, I it's can't, called Grease this, 2. I can't this there's no validity to this piece of I just don't know entertainment it's not I I don't I honestly don't think it's a thing I, I it's a thing this is happening I no, don't understand I don't it. what it may well it may happen but I'm saying it's not a thing no you know what I like this could be one of those things that like everybody's like oh it's happening and then like four years later we're still sitting there like remember when they said there was going to be a grease. Yeah, and it just it just turned into a video booth at Universal somewhere. Well, you know what? Speaking of that, right? Since we're we're, we're talking about, hey, hey, remember when we said, hey, remember when we said Tim Burton was doing a sequel to Beetlejuice? Yeah, that was like three fucking years ago. It still and, hasn't happened. Rem- well, you know what? It's been shelved, Brian. It's been shelved. It's been shelved. I can't say I'm surprised. Right. And and it's been shelved. And you've got Michael Keaton talking about Batman Beyond with Tim Burton. Dude, get don't start out of here. Me. Yes, I would fucking love that. We were sign no, day. no Tim Burton. Michael Keaton, yes, no Tim Burton. No, sign. I'm I'm good with Tim Burton. Sign me up. Nope. No, no, I'm fine with or without. I have no preference. Just give me Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond with Michael Keaton as old Batman. Yes, yes. all day. Right. But fuck Tim Burton in the face. Pretty harsh. How about he just produces it so he's not actually doing anything? No, because if he produces it, then somehow his wife will be attached to it and there'll be a weird soundtrack. Johnny Depp will show up. I don't I don't have any time for that. So basically, here's the last update. In 2017, it was reported that new screenwriters were hired to write the script uh, in time for the 30th anniversary of the movie. And then nothing. Uh, these people have been. We're back on, to Beetlejuice now. Right, Winona Ryder and everyone had they were on talk shows saying, "Yeah, actually, we're, it's going to happen." We said yes. Michael Keaton said yes. Like, we got everyone back on board. Is Gina Davis still alive? Yes, yes. Like Alec Baldwin would be amazing in this in this movie, but like I'm afraid Gina Davis is a shell of her former self. <laughs> wow. Well, really haven't you know seen her in a few years, so can't really tell you. I haven't really been keeping up with her life, so like, I... I guess I that's kind of my problem. Is that what happens when you dig through someone's trash? You kind of know that they were going through some stuff? Well, I'll just, let me, let me, let me Google, let me fucking Google images. Yeah, she didn't look good, boys. She was just in that Exorcist TV show that literally just ended last year. Oh, good. So uh-huh. she's working. 
So, yeah. <laughs> she's she's, out, there. she's out there. She's doing yeah, her thing. She's putting, her, she's putting herself out there. Oh, she's talking my about, God. She's talking about doing things. You know, that is good. That's good. Uh, we, can, we can all acknowledge, though, that she is not on the same level as Alec Baldwin, Michael Keaton, or Winona Ryder. Oh, no. Right? Yeah, no, absolutely. All right. No, good. We can all agree that. So, She's she's acting uh, down you know down the VFW there on weekends <laughs> right yeah she's just doing something that goes direct to DVD to pay the paycheck I get it I, <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ she's like yeah fine what I'm doing a voiceover for 107 Dalmatians okay all right that's if that's what I gotta do I'll do that is it is this one the Centrum Silver is this the one that's gonna <laughs> air in the middle of the Price is Right. Uh, if I could tell some people about the diabetes and and how to get better health care, <laughs> uh, find a good life. Anyway, no, right. no, she's doing the 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 voiceover for Ringworm and Tedder. <laughs> the Jesus, no, it's awful. All right, wow, we just really put her down. I'm sorry, Gina Davis. Nothing personal. Please don't take it personally. I was sitting here being like, I, I think she's uh, Brian. Doing I'll, this Brian fine. did Brian did defend her. Listen, own, Brian, it's been a long time since a league of their own. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying that she legit just was working as little as a year ago. Just because you didn't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Well, I will. I will admit she was probably working very little. And yes. actually, was it second or third season? So she had been doing it consistently for a while. You are really coming to Gina Davis. I'm just saying here. it's not her <laughs> fault. Are, that this no is one, the hill you want to die on. The Gina Davis. I hill. will die on the Gina <laughs> Davis and robes hill. OK. <laughs> Oh, man. It is not Gina Davis's fault that no one wants to see an Exorcist TV show. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. It's dumb. <laughs> All right. Uh, like I want to talk about Fillion might do. Oh, uh, do you leave him alone? I am enjoying the show. I will add the Nathan Fillion no, to that hill no. that I die uh, on. <laughs> absolutely. Nathan Fillion, I'm dying on that hill. I'm watching The Rookie right now. I love that show. Take it back. Oh, How dare you? you guys. How I'm dare so you, sir? silly. Nathan Fillion is a national treasure and the man's a saint. <laughs> How dare you? Right. No, this ends here. Four years. We've had a good run. It's over. <laughs> it's over. Back up the microphones. We're going home. <laughs> Brian, let's spin this off. Let's talk about robes without Josh. I think Josh is the one who has the robe. <laughs> 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 uh, Until Tuesday. <laughs> All right, listen, it's time to it's time to talk uh, about Netflix because they were in the news twice this week and and for weird wacky things. So obviously, uh Netflix has been uh, uh uh pissing people off and causing a kerfuffle about should they be nominated for awards, should they not? Their 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 movies have to be released listen, in So why are you picking on Netflix? Netflix didn't do anything except I know, deliver I know. good content. But, but they but their movies had to be in theaters in order to, to be qualified. So this is what Netflix did. Netflix got tired of taking everyone's shit and said, fine. Here's the deal. There's the Egyptian theater in Hollywood, and it's been struggling, and it's run by a nonprofit. And Netflix just said, hey, guess what? We're going to buy it. We're going to buy the theater. So oh, they're going to release their stuff. We're going to keep it, you know, because it does original programming. It is where they uh, screen classic films and, and like there's the programs that are running there. They're going to keep that. But hey, if they want to drop their, uh, they want to drop one of their movies in there. Guess what? They can drop it in a theater that they own. Now, here's the irony of this theater. <clears throat> one of the sections is the uh, Steven Spielberg wing. Oh, God. <laughs> so that's going to I don't know if they rename that. I yeah, don't know if they're they going to rename the same, that. But whatever. No, fuck it. Keep it up there. Just as they, a giant middle finger. Here's the thing, though. They have they have really said they're going to kind of let the Egyptian theater do its thing, run their programs. But, you know, if to get a movie qualifying for the Oscars, they're like here, we dropped it. It's in the, the Egyptian. Go go check it out. So not to be outdone, though, they were also tired about maybe some of the press. Right. It's kind of hard. To, to know what's dropping on Netflix, right? Because so much happens on Netflix. And it's hard to, to get buzz about it or even make a make a push for a movie to be nominated for an award because you got to go to all the Hollywood publications to get in front of the insiders, right? So they decided, hey, you know what we're also going to do? We're going to make our own publication. Now, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about what you would name a Hollywood newspaper that's focused solely on your streaming service. What would you name it? First thing that pops in your head. What would you name it, Josh? King Tut. Flicks on wood. How about this? How about what they actually picked? Wide. What? What's wide? It's with wide. A, with a Y? With what a Y? W I D E. Wide. Is it who like, named who named that? What, Netflix's who named what? new trade magazine, new trade publication will be called Wide. What's so wide about it? 
I don't. Maybe it's a a wide release. Uh, uh? I don't know. But it, it, it's a it's going to come out. It's going to have like a journal. They're going to talk about what's going on with Netflix. They're going to talk industry news. It's going to be Starlog for Netflix. They're going to they're going to interview the people that are doing their original content and and talk about their shows. I know. That's why I just said yeah. Starlog for Netflix. They have a they have they have quotes from they have an interview from Beyonce and Beyonce doesn't give interviews at all. Yeah, yeah but, Beyonce gives interviews. But, well, no, Beyonce does not give interviews, and Beyonce is given an interview because she has a special coming on Netflix called Homecoming, a film by Beyonce. Gross. But while we are talking about Netflix, and I just I, I feel like we departed the the theater talk a little too soon. By the way, this this location is right on Hollywood Boulevard. It's North mm-hmm. Hollywood. Yeah. It's next to Mel's Drive In, which you've seen in It's a films. very famous theater. Yes, it's a hugely famous theater, and that's the thing that I don't want to gloss over. Netflix buying this is not a small thing. That's no. a big deal. They don't own property, and now they own property. That's a big deal. And it's just and like Amazon. Amazon does the same thing. They own a few movie theaters now, as well as owning distribution of of films and buying films and stuff. That's like that. right. So, th- like, this is a huge deal, and and maybe, uh, you know, they'll they'll put um. You know, it their publication wide on the theater screens oh, in my. the Egyptian. I don't know. That seems weird. Maybe they'll just distribute it. Maybe no. Th- this this is something that they email to industry insiders. Like no, no, no. They're gonna print. They're gonna print them. It'll be on a rack in the Egyptian theater. It'll it'll be oh, so wi- you, oh, okay. it'll be a wide rack. <laughs> Maybe you have to open wide or spread That's wide right. to get that Netflix oh, money. Oh, I don't like either of those options. <laughs> Open I don't up, have any wide puns. Open up wide for this <laughs> Netflix content. Oh, yeah. No, you're right, Josh. I, I don't mean to gloss over the Egyptian. It's just it, it's not it is well known, but not not very popular. And, and it's not like the the Min Chinese theater or something like that. No, I mean, the only reason I brought it up is because right when I when I when I pulled it up, I had no idea it was right on Hollywood Boulevard next yeah. to Mel's drive in. And you know, it's it's in a really, really prime location. Um, and Netflix can do some really great marketing. I mean, it's huge tourism there. The, and and the, the bottom line is this. Netflix, uh, really, especially this week, just decided to say, hey, listen, we're so tired of people with this conversation of are we Oscar worthy or should we go to Emmys or how do we court people? How do we keep people up to date? Screw it. Here, we're going to save a struggling theater. It's a Hollywood icon. We're going to help it. And also, it's time for us to have our own publication, which, I mean, this isn't unprecedented. Uh, other other people have done this too. I mean, cable companies did this when when they were they were starting out. I Who mean, it's, reads emails though. Really, I, I don't know. People, if you send me an email, you're asking just to get unsubscribed. All right, let's talk about the biggest story that uh, can that came out this week, and that is Disney's new streaming service, Disney Plus. They just gave us all the details. And they, they gave they us the it. deets. And also, thank you for giving us pricing and availability, Disney. Apple, are you fucking paying attention? <laughs> um, in Apple's defense, Disney hadn't released this information for like a year. Brian, please don't come to Apple's defense. There's, that, yeah, there's, there's no need for that. The Apple TV Plus thing is ridiculous. You, you, you can't have people come up and describe their TV show. I need to see a trailer of a okay, TV show. I didn't watch the keynote, so well, fine. I'm just saying they didn't have any fucking shit for pricing. It was it was ridiculous. Like as as a fanboy, even even like I can't even get behind right. it because they didn't do anything didn't, substantive. No. So Apple, you're on notice. So here's what's happening, guys. Disney Plus will be launching November 20th in the US, and it is coming in at the low price of seven dollars a month. Uh yeah. Guys, this is this is a big it's almost deal. not even worth thinking about. You know what it's, I mean? Oh yeah. Like it signed up already. Seven seven bucks at launch date is going to have all of uh, Marvel, Pixar, and uh, the existing Star Wars catalog uh, at the time of launch. Um, this is this is kind of incredible. Uh, the amount of money they're pouring into this, they're doing over a billion dollars worth of content uh, a year in order to to do this. Uh, I'll say this: This is this is going to put a lot of pressure on Apple to make their service, which is kind of comparable, kind of, I very loosely, uh, competitively priced. And I mean, not Netflix not is not. And you're and you're being super generous because Apple doesn't have the back catalog that Disney. No, they has. don't. And and we're talking about. I'm like I hate I hate to do this about you know you know the the for just twenty three cents a day, but that's what it is, right? 
It's twenty three. And you're getting cents all the backlog of Disney movies day. too. This is a absolute. This is an absolute no brainer. Mm-hmm. So Netflix standard subscription is thirteen dollars a month. I mean, it, it, this is going to put a lot of pressure on a lot of these streaming services. But I mean, honestly, yeah, what is it going to be available on? Uh, honestly, Brian, I'll say this: they haven't released all the platforms mainly because today was talking about the actual service itself. They were talking; it was an investors meeting, so they were just talking about pricing and just kind of the content. It's seven dollars. Who right, cares what it's from available right on? now? From right now, uh, Brian, the research that I I do have that I I did uh, was able to find. Uh, it will be available on Roku, PS4, there you go, okay, uh, and Android TV. It is. It has not been announced if it will be working on Amazon Fire or Apple TV. Uh, they also didn't announce if it would be available on phones or tablets. So obviously, probably will be available in on those uh, particular devices. They just didn't take the time today to, to talk about it. Disney doesn't really have a problem proliferating their content. Uh, what was interesting, too, is Disney also put out a tweet welcoming the Simpsons to this because the full Simpsons catalog will also be on this. And the Simpsons put out a, uh, a little video uh, of them reluctantly putting on uh, mouse ears. A little Dude, you know, that's, 30, that's 30 years worth of Simpsons seasons. Mm-hmm. 30 years for $7 a month. Yeah. Everyone should shut up and take my money. I'll take your money gladly, Josh. <laughs> Remember when FX did every Simpsons ever and everyone decided, oh, I'm going to watch FX. Like, you got it. I'm yeah, going to watch no, FX. Uh, we, we, uh, so my, the family, we were all down the shore the week that that was going on. So we were just watching every Simpsons ever. It was awesome. Yeah. Everyone just got glued to their TVs. So there's a video in the show notes of the Simpsons kind of uh, taking the news in, in stride. And uh, they, for one, welcome their new mouse overlords. Which you know makes sense. That sounds sounds pretty good. So Disney Plus, guys, it's a it's a no brainer. Uh, I really don't like the, this plus thing, but I guess that's what's going to happen now. Everything's got a plus. Uh, Seven dollars a month. I mean, even for a cheap skate like me, that's a absolute no brainer. Super value. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now. It is now time to talk about the world of comics. See how it's affecting TV. See how it's affecting those movies, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for Cape Talk. Cape Talk. So uh, we got some more news when we were talking about Disney Plus. We found out that there is going to be another Marvel themed show coming to Disney Plus starring Hawkeye. Why do you sound so quizzical? Hawkeye is a fine idea for a show, and I bet you he lounges around in a robe. (laughs) (laughs) So this series is going to revolve around the relationship of Hawkeye and character Kate Bishop and Kate Bishop. Excuse me, Kate Bishop. Uh, was like a, a mentee to Hawkeye, and she was trained by him, and then eventually at some point even she took was Young Avengers over, CJ. yes, took over the mantle, and she was in the Young Avengers. Uh, so this is going to be cool. We're going to see maybe some some street level stuff, right? Maybe kind of like what we got when we were on, you know, Marvel on on Netflix. Obviously not as graphic or anything like that, but not fighting superheroes, no superpowers required, just kind of taking out. You, you don't know, know that it's going to be like totally that. graphic. <laughs> like, and, and, and that, and that could off. be the case i but i really think um and and this even though the show kind of went awry in the last couple seasons i think it should be addressed that that arrow really sort of set the stage for what uh comic book series on mm-hmm. cable television should look like yeah and it was from arrow came flash and flash is fucking like the best thing ever but but it, it started with Arrow, and, and Arrow was amazing the first few seasons. So here's the thing. If you're not going to be as gritty, probably just don't do it. Well, the other part, too, is I don't know how this all interconnects with the uh, uh, Scarlet Witch and Loki series. Are there's going to be interchange? But there's going to be three original series coming to Disney Plus focused around Marvel and the you know these Avengers featured characters. Jeremy Renner has not confirmed if he's in this show because uh, they haven't confirmed whether he lives or dies at the uh, end of the uh, end game. Right. So he's going to die. Things are obviously uh, keep wishing. Because everybody wants to. I don't think he's going to die. And that's sad. why he's in the show. Making me angry and sad, CJ. Uh, well, we, we shall see. I'm going to ugly cry. That's right. We'll just hold each other and cry. <laughs> we should. In our robes. Can we go see Avengers <laughs> in our robes and then hold each other and cry? Probably, yeah. All right. Uh, we've got some news uh, for DC's uh, original series, Titans on DC Universe, that we now know who's going to play Bruce Wayne. And it's a face that you may know from Game of Thrones. It's the actor who plays Jorah Marmot. 
um, which his name, real name, I can't pronounce, so I'm not going to butcher it. I have an issue with this. What is your said issue, sir? My Bruce Wayne does not get friend zoned. And all I see from this guy is a friend zoned MFR. You just, you, 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 that's one role. You're going to, you're going to put that on him forever because of one role. You know what? I, you, the only other role I can think of him in is in Resident Evil Ex- uh, Extinction. That's it. Oh, was he friend zoned? No, he was an evil scientist who dies at the end. Uh, but no, Josh, uh, Brian, he was also in uh, Doctor Who. He was in charge of the um, yes, he was. the army there when they were going into the Weeping Angels. In the in the valley. Yeah. In yes. the, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. the, 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 the library, right? The Not the library. What the hell was that? God damn it. The, 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 that was the ship. I know what you're talking spaceship. about. The spaceship. Yeah. With the forest. Yeah. The forest. Thank you. Here, look. He was in Tomb Raider. What was he in Tomb Raider? Like the Angelina Jolie? The Lara Croft. Yeah, yeah. The the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Um, Yeah, Well, here's the thing. If you're going to have an older Bruce Wayne, Mm -hmm. I don't hate this casting. I really don't. I mean, if it's going to be older, I I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with it. I mean, because he is fucking older. Like, he's got, he's going to have to be for Dick to be, you know, in his early 20s like he is in this show. Well, it's still going to be Brent. It's still going to be Brent and Thwaites, right? Yeah, still Brenton Thwaites. And then you have um, the Eastside Morales is Deathstroke now on Titans. Since when? Uh, uh, last week. Why did I not hear of this? I'm sorry. No, it was uh, mid-March. And you know who Eastside Morales is. You've seen him in a bunch of stuff. Have I? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, he's been, he did the entire tour of all of the cop shows, right? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But he's been Deathstroke for a few months. Um, NCIS, Mars, How to Get Away with Murder, Chicago PD, Ozark. Like he's a big TV actor um, that I think lends some credibility to Titans. It actually makes me want to because and and if you recall, Brian, I've been calling for Deathstroke now for months. Uh, I know. I need I need Deathstroke. You need viable, should watch the show because it's gonna, pretty good. I'm gonna have to watch a goddamn show. Yeah, Calm down. It's pretty good. All right. <laughs> and another thing that Brian's gonna be right about. Brian's gonna enjoy being right again. <laughs> Love being right. So if you're interested in seeing this portrayal of Batman, hop on to the DC Universe train like we've been suggesting for a long time, and watch yourself some Titans because uh, it's gonna be interesting. Well, fans, it's now time for my favorite time where I go around the internet, find the weird, find the obscure, and then I ask these two road mustachio gentlemen for their tech perspective. If if they're gonna imagine me with a mustache, can they imagine me with one of those ones that like curls oh, yeah, that up? Curls up, yeah. I want to. I want a little bit. I want, I've always wanted to do that. Okay. All right. Look, if if you're gonna start talking to me about IKEA and Sonos, I'm gonna tell <laughs> you to fuck right the hell off. <laughs> so we. Um, I just. At least it did early this time. I don't have to. <laughs> Again, you got to get that looked at. That is not a good time for the internet. Oh, perspective. <laughs> Listen. Look. It's, no, no, no. Let me, let me set this up and then you can do oh, your thing. You please set it up. Go ahead. It's an important time to, to, to take two brands. Two brands, right? That obviously should be together and, and put them together like peanut butter and cottage cheese. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Ikea and Sonos have teamed up to make the ultimate speaker lamp. A retailer that is not a furniture company, no matter right. what anybody tells you. And a software company that is not a speaker company. Right. Are building furniture speakers mm-hmm. somehow. Right. Right. Um, look, look, it, it, it look, it, 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 it looks, it looks like, um, what's my Apple thing? What's that? What's that called? It looks like a home pod. Yeah. A home pod. looks like a home pod with a light bulb on top of it. Yeah. Um, except listen, I love my home pod as, as, as a small speaker. It's amazing. I can't speak for the quality of these speakers. What I can say is uh, Sonos is not a, an audio company. They're a software company. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is going to be a subpar speaker. Yeah. Period. 
So let me, it's going to be the lamp, right? The lamp for 179 And then they made a bookshelf speaker, right? And when I say a bookshelf speaker, I don't mean a speaker you put on your bookshelf. I mean, you can turn it sideways and it becomes a shelf for you and your books <laughs> for $99. Oh my God. Like, I get it. Someone in, someone, here's the deal. Here's Sonos's play. Are you ready? This is what Sonos does. Sonos goes, hey, you own a house, right? Uh, yeah, I got a house. Okay. Uh, buy buy a speaker because you, you're gonna need that. Uh, I mean, hey, you listen to music, right? You like music. Uh, all, all, all right, that that no you need something deal. to play music. Right. Okay, I, I got it. All right. Hey, listen, we want you to be successful. Uh, did you get the promotion at the job? Yeah, I did actually. I got a new promotion. Great. Buy another fucking speaker. Okay. Buy <laughs> buy another speaker because they'll now all sing together. Okay. Are you good? Yeah. Thanks, Sonos. I mean, aggressive, but great. Next step is hey, uh, hey, that promotion worked out really well. Yeah, yeah. How are you enjoying the speakers? Great. Time to get a new house, buddy. Time to upgrade. <laughs> and how many rooms does that new house has? Seven? Mmm. You know what you need? Speakers in all the rooms. And, and two you get, in your bathroom. You got one on one on the TV? Yeah. Speaker for the TV. Hey, you tired of lamps being functional? No, lamps are buy our speaker lamp. <laughs> Sorry for the yelling. I just obviously just busted my own microphone. Oh, but that's great. their play. I don't understand it. And then Ikea's in there is like, things are very hard to assemble. This won't be that bad. Okay, <laughs> bye. This makes no sense. The lamp, by the way, the lamp does not include a smart bulb outside of the, in the box. You got to buy that separately. Want a smart lamp? Want the lamp to actually like turn on? It's a smart lamp, right? Nope, fuck it. Regular light bulb. Light bulb probably not included. You think they could have partnered with, you know, somebody, anybody, Lutron, just, Phillips, anybody, no, just, just like, like, find like a <laughs> cheap Chinese manufacturer's like, this is poison inside of it. Yeah. All right. We'll put it in there. That's fine. <laughs> if it breaks, evacuate the house. I get it. Whatever. It's fine. No. <sighs> uh, it comes with everything except the two screws you need to mount the lamp on top of the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> no, remember, the instructions are also incomprehensible. So, you know, because they're in Swedish, right? This is ridiculous. Uh, uh, I don't know whose house was really crying out for a lamp speaker, but I mean, y- you're living the dream. I mean, I'm going to call it. it a spamp. Don't <laughs> we've we've the new well, spamp we've... by Sonos. All right. Well, now that we're uh, done talking about the Sonos lamp, we, I, I have to know what you think about this uh, Ikea and Sonos matchup. And uh, I'd love to know the uh, the worst one that you have in deck. So. Worst, worst tech mashup. Hit, hit me up. I want to hear it. All right. Well, listener, uh, if you are one of our Patreon supporters, you have a lovely episode to listen to. We are going to do a spoiler cast for the movie Shazam. So uh, if you want to hear our thoughts, head over to Patreon, become a subscriber, and you will get a wonderful spoiler cast in your feed today. Uh, I want to thank you so much for listening to the show over the last four years, some of you. So thank you so much for that. And please do me a favor. Share this episode with a friend because it will. It means the world to us. Uh, and we just want to keep this uh, show going. So thank you so much for making us your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work. We'll see you next week. Well, welcome to the club because you are back on a nerd. Listen, I need you to, to do me a favor. If you're driving, I need you to pull over. Just pull over real quick. I need you to, now that you're in a safe place, but park, close your eyes. All right. If you're walking, please go sit down on the neighbor's lawn. Close your eyes. I want I want you to picture Ladies something. Ladies and gentlemen who, who who are doing these things right now, please go ahead and check your phone and, and look at the show notes. There will be a link in there for this luxurious robe on Amazon. <laughs> I want you to go ahead and I want you to click on that link. And why don't you... Add that shit into your cart. That way, when you're listening to that kind of nerd, you can feel as luxurious as we probably You can be luxurious gentlemen just like we are. I'm trying to set this up. Hold on. <laughs> Let me set it up again because I'm going to put this ahead of all this rope talk. Because the rope talk is at the beginning of the show and it makes no sense. The rope talk is essential. It's all about the rope talk. We're at eight minutes and we have two shows to do. We, really we have talked about music. We have talked about robes. What don't know, more do you want? I don't know how much of this I can keep. So all you of can it. keep all yeah, of it. This eight minute stinger. I don't even care. <laughs> um. So I was not fancy like you. So I had you were not a, a fancy gentleman. I was not a fancy gentleman. I was I was not the dapper as fuck as you and your son clearly are. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I drove a 90, 1990 Plymouth Acclaim, which only had the tape decks. Oh, my God, a Plymouth Acclaim. Yeah. 
I had so I you had, had to the, put the uh, tape in there with the wire coming out of it. I had the tape it? in there with the wire in there. It hooked up to a disc man, and then I went the extra mile, put some double sided tape on top of the disc man, and I mounted that shit to the dashboard so that every time you <sighs> hit like a pebble, the CD skipped like sixteen thousand times. Ugh. Nah, bro, I had I had so j- the um uh oh the the wire connecting my radio to my and i had a a a, a line driver uh, an audio audio control line driver the the wire connecting my radio to my line driver was a $300 1 meter cable jesus i mean you, it was uh, i had fancy. i had a i had a i had a sound competition stereo um that was both qualified for um sound quality and spl sound pressure level um ridiculous and dropping panties and, oh and it was dropping panties you could hear this fucking mm-hmm. car from a half mile away i'm not kidding i am very familiar with that sound because i also have placed first in 150 cc on mario kart so. <laughs> <laughs> my first car see by the time that i i was driving it was 2004 i got i had my mustang which had a system in it that had an auxiliary port and i owned an ipod I had a few mix CDs, you know, with have, have laying around for the songs that couldn't fit on the iPod Video 32 gig. This is but hilarious. By then, I had so much music, I was like, oh, I don't know what I need these CDs for, and like CDs just <laughs> became frisbees to throw out of my car. By 1999, I had a state of the art fucking like sound system in my car because I refused to roll around in anything less because you know you got a rep to uphold. Right. Yeah. Oh, of course. But you fuckers clearly uh, just, less of a priority. It, it just it just came in. I was like, oh, cool. I do want to say this. You mentioned something about Christian earlier, and so there's this thing that happened over the course of the last week that uh, we didn't get to talk about since the last time we recorded. Um, Christian has, let's say, a proclivity to uh fucking walk around my house in nothing but boxer briefs and he's just putting <laughs> he's just putting his ass all over my furniture and i just oh, got God. i got sick of it and oh, i'm no. like dude you need clothes he's like you know what you know what if you don't want me to sit on your furniture in my in my underwear you better get me a robe so i <laughs> wow so i got him a robe he made right demands. now 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 see here's the thing he so the the only other time i've ever seen him in a robe um I took him to his first uh, football game uh, last year, and we got a we got a, a suite at the St. Regis in Washington D.C. Um, and we we checked into the room, and I went down um, downstairs to get some snacks to bring back up to the room. When I got back up to the room, he was sitting in nothing but a robe <laughs> on the sofa, drinking water out of a like a fancy glass. And I went, "Did you?" Uh, did you get the water from the sink or did you open the $15 bottle of water there? He goes, Oh, I opened the bottle. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I bought him, so I bought him a robe, and he's now lounging around the house in a robe. And if you can see me now, he, I'm he, also wearing a robe because he looks like such a luxurious gentleman that <laughs> I had to also get a robe. And now I am not fucking. Now we're robe you. buddies. We're robe buddies. This story has now prompted me that I want a robe as well. You sad. get a dude, you if, get a luxurious robe on Amazon for like twenty two. I was about to say if you could please send me the link I'll to the send robe you the link. that you're wearing. Yeah. I'm assuming there's a plethora of colors I have to choose. I'm from. a I, well I went with the charcoal. It's charcoal or navy, I think, and mm. I like to be a luxurious gentleman. Yes. Also as well. I feel it, like we should get the robes and then we can get together and smoke cigars I, I, while I was drinking say, scotch. I, I, I was right. thinking about taking it a, a level further and getting trying to figure out how to make branded that kind of nerd podcasting <laughs> robes. <laughs> we yes. podcast solely in robe yes. form. Well, I, look, it'd be it'd be a good thing to mark our uh, our fourth anniversary, which was officially April 10th, right? Yes. Yes, it was. April 10th was the the first ever uh, episode of this show. Uh, I just uh, so first off, that's crazy. Do, does anyone remember how long the first episode was? An hour and a half. Oh wait, no, the first episode the first, or the first, first episode. episode that it was we just reco- us fumbling around for. What, what like about a the day? one that we recorded that never actually recorded? Oh, the lost, the lost, the episode. lost first the episode, lost one. Yes, as every good podcast, there is one episode that just poof <laughs> just goes away. It happened to just be our first. So like, thank God that we just got the shitty one out of the way and it's gone. Yeah. So we hit 
we hit the hey that's terrible and also oh where'd it go in the exact same moment it doesn't matter it's gone it's gone episode zero zero we had a label it's like that was I back know. when we had the we'll do it live mentality <laughs> that, oh. that's right that's right no no organization whatsoever so i just i want you know again boys i love you four years later still still a great time i've got my fancy robe I'm 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 ready to go. Also, I've been uh listening to an unhealthy amount of Motley Crue. <laughs> that sounds about right. Well, and let's do this. Basically um, all I can do. We have I a- just want to say um I am very jealous and I I would like to welcome you to the Fancy Robe podcast <laughs> where we talk about luxurious <laughs> robes for an hour and a half. We've now uh now that we've hit the uh, the four year mark it's time to spin off into its natural progression which is talking about robes on Amazon and doing reviews of them. Oh my god, can we do that? That's, that's the progression. <laughs> this one feels welcome. a little coarse on my skin. But I'm it's not welcome a fan everyone to that kind of, of robes podcast, fabric. a weekly show that tells you what is going on in the world of robes. <laughs> that kind of robes podcast. That kind of I robe. feel like when I sit in this robe, I'm like on a cloud of marshmallows. Now I think we need to set up a parameter for that kind of robe. Uh, are you are you naked under the robe? Like, what's the level of of? I got so I got I, no no I have I have a, a pair of thieves boxer briefs and Ooh, yes. I've got a I've got a t shirt. Well, so like, I don't think it's appropriate. Christian would disagree, (laughs) but I don't think it's appropriate to be commando under a robe. It really depends on how he to be breezy. Robe is yeah. Seriously, like if you need a little little airy air in the Uh, dairy. I don't know. I'm I'm always worried about like you know uh, that angle where you're like you know gotta like bend over to get something and Mm, then you're just dangling there for everybody to see. You don't want to do that. I mean, it also depends on how how low does the robe go. Does the robe end at your thighs? It look the robe uh, protects both the angle of my dangle and the heat of my meat. That's exciting, Um, especially with the heating part. (laughs) I feel like there should be plenty of ventilation. This is. We're at eight minutes and we have two shows to do. We, really we have talked about music. We have talked about robes. What more know, do you want? I don't know how much of this I can keep. So all you of can it. keep all you of it. This eight minute stinger. I don't even oh, care. Oh, Josh. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you. Um, this week, uh, Brian buys something while recording. Brian is placing an order for his robe right now. <laughs> all right. Oh, there we go. All right. Let's, uh, let's do a new segment. New. Let's make Brian buy something on Amazon and go. Let's do uh, something that we do every single week, but the listeners never get to hear. Let's put the show on the road. And add two cards. Ooh, yes. <laughs> that man looks luxurious as fuck. Right. This guy, he is so comfortable right now. He doesn't even care that he's in a photo <laughs> shoot. just sent the robe in the t- <laughs> Hold on. Now I got to know how much the robe is. Curiosity. It's twenty dollars, CJ. $20. Why, why, really why haven't Where's you worse? already bought one? I have. I have the schematics of this robe. Is we one can of the all pictures. have. We can all have the same. We can all be robe. Now, buddies. Josh, we all we all get the same robe, right? It's twenty dollars. That, that's a low investment for the robe. Now we just got to find a place to put our logo on the back or something, <laughs> or maybe right over the right over the chest, like embroidery right over, right the over there. Then now my question arms. is, how come the navy is twenty bucks? But the other, the charcoal is twenty bucks. I'm sorry, but the navy is twenty two ninety nine. Well, you got to pay extra for that kind of action, Cotton. You you pay extra for for the the extra dye. Uh, is there I extra think, dye? I think I uh, no. I think navy makes you feel sexier. Oh, you know what? And you know what? I'm gonna go with navy. I want to <laughs> feel sexy. There we go. Add to cart. <laughs> Ooh, a mortar and pestle for when I make guacamole. Oh I'm gonna just start the show now. <laughs> I should get this mortar and pestle set. I have also uh, finished my Jameson and I have to go make another glass all while discussing robes. Best episode ever. (laughs) 